Hey guys, welcome back to another Tumblr tutorial. Today I am super excited to show you how I worked on this boho floral tumbler. If you know me, you know I absolutely love neutrals, boho, all of the things. And so as soon as I saw these little sticker cows from Gracefully Created, I knew I had to do something with them. I bought them and I sat on them for a while because I wanted to get it right and here we are. So we're going to start out with a 32 ounce plump from the Tipsy Magnolia and we're going to spray paint that gold. We're using the epoxy method to apply the glitter. I am putting a little bit more epoxy on this than normal because I am going to layer my glitters and so I want to give it a little bit more absorption. And once we've got all of that applied and that bottom popped out of the base, I'm going to go in with Morocco from Chase Ray. This is the thickest cut that I'm using or the chunkiest glitter that I'm using and so I'm gonna lay that down first it's not going to be full coverage it's gonna be probably like three quarters <laughs> coverage and then once I've got that laid down I'm gonna go over it with goddess from peachy olive glitters and barely there from peachy olive glitters as well again I'm not giving full coverage on goddess because I still want there to be a little bit of room for barely there to adhere to the epoxy so giving it decent coverage but not full coverage we're going to tap off any excess and then we're going to go in with barely there and you'll see that i went back in with goddess after this this toned it down just a little bit too much and so i wanted to add a little bit more of that gold back into the glitter coverage and so i went back over it one more time with goddess it didn't stick too much because at that point the epoxy was basically all soaked up or the glitter had soaked into the epoxy um, but it did stick just enough to give it that little bit of like metallic shimmer that I was going for so I'm gonna take that tap it off make sure there's nothing falling off there and then I'm gonna roll it in a piece of printer paper just to make sure that there are no pokey bits since we're doing spray paint we want to make sure that this is as smooth as possible so I'm just gonna be very proactive and put the glitter on that paper rub it off and then you'll see here sometimes I do this with my super chunky glitters I took a baby wipe and I'm just pushing away a teeny like maybe like a millimeter or two back from the top rim just to make sure that it's not all lumpy and weird when we go to spray paint I don't want any bumps showing on that top rim which is notorious for happening so I'm just gonna pat that down top and bottom and then we're gonna hang that on the drying rack overnight once I have two coats of epoxy on I'm then going to go in and measure my tumbler to get it ready for the checker stencil I'm not giving you the measurements that I used for my tumbler because that is going to vary depending on the viscosity of the epoxy that you use as well as how many coats you put on it. So you'll need to measure that for yourself. Just make sure you're measuring after the epoxy has been applied, otherwise your stencil won't line up in the end. So we're gonna go through and we're going to pull away every other checker basically uh, and I will tell you I got a new phone and for some reason it stops recording after a few minutes even though I have a terabyte of storage now I don't know why so I try to catch it I'm trying to pay attention um, but it did stop like halfway through this so um, enjoy me peeling half of this stencil I guess and I will see you back when we're applying it And after a 15 second intermission, I back. I'm using my cup cradle from Cami Page Boutique to use it as like a straight line or a straight edge or a ruler, whatever you wanna call it. But basically I'm just going vertically down the cup just to make sure I've got a straight line. So when I put this stencil down, I know that everything's gonna line up in the end. We're using the hinge method to apply this. So I'm gonna take it and basically line it up with the backing on on one side and then I'm going to use the hinge method meet it up in the middle and then start the application I just want to make sure because this is going to be very noticeable if it doesn't line up in the end um, that everything is in place before I commit to sticking that down so you'll notice here I struggled a little bit I got my um 
transfer tape a little crinkled right here I'm trying to cut it to kind of lay it flush but um, it gave me a little bit of a headache it was totally my fault I was half paying attention rushing to get this applied super excited to spray paint and I should have taken a couple more seconds to make sure that was flat it worked out in the end I ended up just covering up there was a little part on the bottom that didn't meet up um, and so I ended up just covering it with a floral it wasn't a huge deal I knew that was going to be applied over top of it so I didn't stress too much about it but we're basically going to make sure that is applied everything is stuck down and remove your transfer tape I'll readjust where the little check boxes were off kilter a little bit here um, like I said I just stuck a sticker cal over it so I didn't spend a ton of time I just readjusted things to make sure there wasn't like a huge gap or anything overlaying um, one another and we just kind of moved on with the day. So I trimmed that away and then I made sure to focus on the top and bottom rim for an extra minute or two because it tends to lift or the stencil tends to, to not lay all the way down and then spray paint seeps underneath it and you don't get a crisp line at the top and the bottom. So I made sure just to go over it with my squeegee to make sure everything was laid down. There was not anything that was lifting on the top and bottom rim. You'll see here where I'm focusing extra there. Uh, and then I'm gonna take this outside to spray paint. And side note, this does not have to be a glossy surface to spray paint. I did sand the top and bottom rims um, prior to applying this stencil, just to make sure there were no pokey bits showing through the spray paint. Um, but it definitely does not have to be a glossy surface that you can spray paint it sanded so um, we're gonna go out I did mark I didn't show this but I did mark off about every checker and a half just to make sure that when I was ombreing my colors that they all had an equal amount of real estate um, when I spray painted them I didn't want one to have more color than the other so about every third and I'm just gonna go in with my darkest first just to make sure it's not going to overwhelm my other colors and when you're spray painting, you want to hold it probably about 10 to 12 inches away from you. That's just going to prevent you from getting those super harsh lines. Um, it wants to be misted lightly. On, you want it to mist it lightly on the cup. Um, and so it doesn't like drip or anything like that. Um, but basically, once you go over it with light mists, you're able to build the blend on that coverage. So as long as you're not super close to the tumbler, you're not gonna get paint running and you're gonna be able to just kind of overlap it and kind of go back and forth and like I said, build that blend um, to get that good even ombre. Uh, <laughs> it's basically, we're doing the same thing that we do with glitter with paint. So um, you'll see me go back and forth here for a minute. I will list the Rust-Oleum colors in the uh, description box for you guys and I will let this play through and I will see you in the next clip. I'm gonna let that paint sit and dry for a couple of hours and then we're gonna go in and remove all of the stencils on the tumbler. Once they're all removed, we're gonna go in and add a little bit more glitter.
I'm using olive oil from PG Olive. This was in one of the last month's palettes, I believe. I will link that for you guys below. And then I'm gonna use about 10 ml of the CC DIY UV Resin to probably about seven to 10 milliliters of the glitter. We're gonna mix that up. And at this point, I don't have any epoxy over the spray paint. This is just raw spray paint. I'm gonna put that in that center kind of cavity there and you'll see that I'm just going to slowly work it around the outer edge. Um, I wanted it to be a super crisp line for the outer ring, and so I didn't want to kind of put it in there with my popsicle stick and chance anything like falling off the side or cross-contaminating anything like in the paint or anything like that. Um, but basically, I'm just going to swirl it around like you see here. And then once everything is in place, I'm going to take my torch and pop any of those air bubbles I might have mixed up into there. And then we're going to cure that with the UV light for probably about 15 minutes. I forgot to mention it earlier, but my first coat of epoxy was probably, I would say about 40, 45 milliliters of the Flint Sisters Fast Setting Epoxy. My second coat was probably 30 to 40, and then I would say this one's probably another 30 if I had to guess. The next step in this process is going to be applying those sticker cals, and anytime that you're working with any sort of a clear cast decal, we want to make sure that they are being applied to a glossy surface. If you sand it and coat it with epoxy, that epoxy is never going to be able to get under that sticker cal to smooth or gloss up that surface, if that makes sense. So always apply those to a glossy surface, otherwise you're going to have super dull matte glitter underneath those decals. So once that epoxy is cured, we're going to go around the rim with the Dremel to buff away any of that spray paint. Because I sanded, basically sanded with my baby wipe in the beginning, there wasn't a lot to buff away, but we still want to make sure that there is some stainless exposed there so this final coat has something to adhere to. I'm just cleaning up my rim after I do that. And then I'm gonna go into placing my sticker cows. So these are from Gracefully Created. They come nine to a sheet. I wanna say they were probably like six to eight dollars if I remember correctly. I've, I've had them for probably a couple of months now, so I don't remember exactly. But um, what I'm doing, because I had a boo boo here at the bottom with the overlapping checkers. I'm going to apply my biggest decal in that area first and then I'm going to base my other decal placements off of that big decal to make sure that I'm covering up my mistake. So I'm just going to cut these and use some painter's tape to kind of find a good placement for them. I don't want to apply them because I'm not 100% sure I want to commit to that placement yet. So you'll see me go back and forth here for a little bit just to find the right placement. And I went back and forth debating if I wanted to put that little dream catcher on there. Um, and I decided that it just, the yellow in it didn't match with the color palette I was using. And so I put that off to the side and my thought process behind this placement was that I was going to leave a little bit in like a, a blank space in the center between like four of the decals because I think I'm gonna put like a textured gold metallic decal in the center of there. I just couldn't decide what and I couldn't commit to um, a quote or a saying or something like that um, before I wanted to post this tutorial. So I just left that as is. I mean, if somebody wants to like buy and customize it, I could do it then. Um, but there's a high chance that I'm keeping this tumbler for myself. So I just wanted to be sure on the placement because I know I really love this tumbler. And if I'm going to keep it, I want to be sure on the design. So that is why there's a little space there. Um, when it's all said and done is because I plan to do something with it after the fact, but I'm just going to lay these down using the hinge method. Um, and when you're applying them, if you are not using gloves, I would highly, highly, highly recommend 
that you are watching where you grab when you peel the backing off of there. You don't want any fingerprints under the clear cast because it will show through, especially on a spray painted surface. Sometimes with glitter, you can kind of cover it up and mask those fingerprints, um, but spray paint, not so much. So just be cautious of that when you are handling these. Um, and I'm gonna, like I said, use the hinge method to apply them, starting with my biggest one first, where I made that spray paint mistake. And then I'm going to let this play through and I'll see you guys at the end. So after the sticker cows were applied and I put another coat of epoxy on it for this tutorial, this design is all done. I thought I would show you guys the difference between the shaded colors and natural sunlight colors. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. Hit that bell button for notifications on future tutorials. I will have my free makers group linked for you guys in the description box and I'll see you guys next weekend.